Hello. Thank you for the introduction. My topic is Digital Learners Promote English, the Universal Language. Using technology in teaching English in the Philippines is not new. I was in grade one in the late 1960s and we already had modern technology in our English speech classes, our speech laboratories. Then are more or less the same as the ones we have here in Fiati now. Looks like technology has not gone far when it comes to speech labs. But the speech labs were are really more focused on analog, not digital. The headphones and microphones were there so students can pronounce the words phonetically perfectly. By the time I was in grade 6, I had mastered the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA. How, or how to spell English words in IPA and how to pronounce them correctly, like to always dent the T's and D's. During my time in school, English was a medium of instruction in all levels, but the 1987 constitution changed that. Filipino has become the medium of instruction, especially in grade school and high school. In February 2003, because of the global information revolution, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo directed then Education Secretary Edilberto de Jesus to use English as the primary medium of instruction. Her directive said, quote, Until Congress enacts a law mandating Filipino as the language of instruction, I am directing the Department of Education to return English as the primary medium of instruction, provided some subjects will still be taught in Filipino. But that has been followed more in the breach. Sad to say, the level of English has gone down in the post-Marcos era. Students use English only for some subjects in school. They use the native tongue in communicating among themselves. They watch mostly Filipino language shows on TV. English language programs, including cartoons, are now dubbed in Filipino. Fortunately, we are now in the digital age, the age of computers and microchips. Technology is a double-edged sword. The government and business sectors use technology to promote English or rather Filipino language in the various media, films, TV, radio and print, tabloids and romance novels. The same technology can also be used to promote the English language. But while practically all students and teachers use computers, digital learning is not always applied. Many teachers still use books, notebooks and blackboards or whiteboards and many students' interaction with digital technology is limited to their cell phones, Facebook accounts and video games like Dota 1 and Dota 2. In the 1990s, when I used to teach French language, we used illustrated books and manuals and their complementary tape recordings and some TV modules. And we used a lot of role playing. In the 2010s, with great advances in computer technology and the internet, language teachers now have huge resources in teaching a language. Unfortunately, there are many teachers of all disciplines who are technophobes. They are afraid to use technology. I guess that is the reason why there is an urban legend that spreads the information that students know more about computers or technology than teachers. I guess the spread of this urban legend has discouraged many teachers from using technology in their teaching repertoire. Perhaps it is for this reason that some schools limit their faculty to the age of 54. This is actually ageism and is against the law. But Filipinos are not fond of litigation so nobody has tested this legal principle. In one school where I used to teach, the administration probably believes this urban legend. Once during the, a faculty meeting, the chair was asking us individually our age. I knew what she was about to say, something that promoted that urban legend. So I answered that I might be older, but I knew more about computers than my students. 
I started writing computer programs in my freshman year in 1976. I have been a netizen since the mid-1990s, developing and maintaining websites and later taking care of my blogs, social media accounts in Facebook and other social media platforms. Most of us here are younger than Bill Gates and the late Stephen Jobs or Jim Clark, the former Stanford professor and co-founder of the first hugely successful commercial browser, Netscape. Bill Gates is 66, Jobs would have been 66 today too, and Clark is 77 years old. These guys are surely more computer literate than any of us here. In this day and age, teachers should not be afraid of technology. On the contrary, they should embrace them. Digital technology is ideal to help teachers teach language learners. It is ideal for learners to learn on their own and thus improve their language development. I couldn't teach now without digital technology. In all my communication and English subjects, I usually make slides or PowerPoint presentations, which includes digital photos and images and video clips and films. I also ask my students to do their own presentations, creating blogs, slides, reports or videos or even short films. It cannot be overemphasized that the students must learn to do things with language rather than just learning about language. There are several benefits of technology for language learning. First is internet access to language education. With the World Wide Web, one has access to all forms of education in the world. While not doing anything during this pandemic, I got certificates from studying a course in web design as well as on hypnotherapy from an institute in Sussex, England. Nowadays, the internet is littered with English language courses. The structured system would be good for students as they could be guided properly. But for academic purposes, I do not recommend such internet courses alone. I know many English language instructors in such courses who do not speak fluent English, much less write English well. They merely follow the course manuals. When it comes to grammar, they would be at a loss. But these internet courses are good for English language learners to gain confidence in speaking the language, since virtual classrooms are less intimidating than face-to-face -face classes. If they have the financial capacity, I urge the parents to enroll their students in online English language courses to complement their English courses in school. Another benefit of technology is the development of blended language learning courses. Here, in class and online language learning are combined to increase student engagement. In this way, classroom teaching and online training are complementary to each other. The English department or course program faculty should prepare e-learning modules that will be part of the curriculum. In the classroom learning phase, the teacher can evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of the students and base his lecture on them. As mentioned earlier, learners can learn a language better by doing something instead of just listening to a teacher in class. At least one e-book should be required reading with two or three ebooks or audiobook books as references. At least one English language film should be seen and discussed. Attendance at least one online language webinar should be required. In this way, students can learn by reading ebooks, listening to an audiobook, watching a film, attend a seminar, and write or submit reports about those activities. Now, learning should be integrated with project work. It is important for learners to learn things through language. The traditional book report is a good way to learn a language by reading and understanding a book. Or instead of a book, they can choose a topic, say climate change. But instead of submitting a report, a student or group of students can collaborate to make a video out of the book or topic, a short film or a short documentary. This way, they can learn more about the language by reading texts online, watching videos online, doing research in physical libraries or online libraries. 
The digital technology and World Wide Web provides students and learners a host of resources such as applications or apps, software programs or websites. Now, these are digital learning resources or DLRs that teachers and students can use to promote and support students' learning goals. Now, there are three categories of DLRs. The digital academic content tools contain academic materials like interactive tutorials, exercises, modules, ebooks, audiobooks, websites, blogs, etc. The digital productivity tools are used to help students plan, document, organize, and analyze content. These tools include a slide presentation tool, a timeline tool, or a concept mapping tool. And then there is the digital communication tools, which are resources one can use to communicate, collaborate, network, or share information. Examples of these include document sharing tools to support joint work like Google Docs, or discussion boards, or group chat, or a journal or blog tool. In fine, rapid advances in technology, especially digital technology, have greatly facilitated life in this age of information technology. In the field of education, this has been extremely advantageous for language learning and development. From giving access to language courses anywhere in the world, to strengthening student-teacher language communication, to providing various apps and softwares and programs for lead for language learning, digital technology have opened new vistas for better, faster, efficient learning process for both learners and educators. If our school's administration and faculty members and students properly use digital technology to their advantage, we can easily promote and advance the development of English learning in the Philippines. Thank you.